math kind of a mindset, you want evidence. You want hard evidence that, that, that's testable. That's me. That's, that's, that's why I'm a Christian. The evidence swayed my opinion and changed my view of the world. <laughs> this was my view of the world growing up. There was, there was dad who went to work every day and an officer somewhere, and there was mom who stayed home and washed clothes and cooked meals and cleaned toilets and, and enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know mom does, grandma doesn't enjoy cleaning toilets. We've talked about that. And then, and then the kids all adored mom and dad. That's not an accurate view of the world. That's one of the, one of the fundamental assumptions I needed to work on when I became a Christian in the 90s. This is, might be, might be more, a more accurate picture of the world, don't you think? Or the, I like this image better. I especially <laughs> like her picking her nose. That's, <laughs> that just fits. But this image is closer to reality today. This is, this is you guys, we, um, we had to talk about Gen Z this morning. You guys, how many, how many people are Gen Z, like born in the, almost a, a, good, a good chunk? Yeah, I... There's a few people like me that are almost as old as dirt. <laughs> you guys grew up with these devices. They're just part of life to you. They're as much a part of life to you as cars are to my generation. It's just the way things work. But what that means is you guys are you guys face a challenge. You and while we all face a challenge, but especially young people, you face a challenge that I never even had to think about when I was younger. And I helped build this stuff, by the way. So here's the challenge you face. Ads in the bathroom. <laughs> there's messages everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's messages. Everywhere, and I mean everywhere. There's a whole industry.
there was a back in 2019 there was a huge controversy that just that just came out of nowhere there's a predator in patrick egan park he's out there wearing a mask he's gonna snatch up your kids and take them to somewhere in the woods and chop them up and eat them for dinner and stuff and that rumor went everywhere thousands of comments hundreds of shares it made it to the to the local tv new web tv news websites got announced all over the place the egan police put it on their facebook page Predator in Patrick Egan Park, look out! This young man's mother saw the, saw the posting. She said, wait a minute, that's my son. He likes to play in a costume and a mask. He's 11 years old. That's what 11-year-olds do. So she called the police and said, that's my son. The police changed the Facebook posting to say it was a, um, instead of a, instead of a, a predator, it was a prankster. And, and that went out to thousands of shares, hundreds of, sh hundreds of shares, thousands of comments. And then <clears throat> Dakota County decided they were going to charge my grandson with fifth degree assault. One of the penalties for fifth degree assault is removal of the child from the home and placement into foster care for playing in the park in a, in a mask, in a costume. Yeah, you bet I was outraged. So we spent, we won. We spent a lot of money, we got a good attorney, we went to court, they put, they put my grandson on trial, we went to court and we won, we kicked butt. <coughs> so yay raw for that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can talk about outrage, but that's not the point. The point is, these messages over the internet are powerful and we need to learn how to deal with it. Um, I did a radio interview, the Star Tribune interviewed, interviewed me and published two articles. My truth, versus the lie, the fire hose of falsehood versus the squirt gun of truth. My squirt gun of truth got a few shares and a few dozen comments and that was it and the whole thing fizzled. Believe me, I promise you, I promise you I tried to make the truth popular. I was unsuccessful. I'm not the only one. That's, that's the fire hose of falsehood versus the squirt gun of truth. That's on a personal scale. On a big scale, we see, we see how it can affect elections and change history. And I, this is a, just a, I got into a, face, into a Facebook thread with somebody. <clears throat> they actually believed that, the, that, that, that supercomputers in Germany tainted, used satellites to taint the vote count in these voting machines here in the U.S. There's people who really believe that stuff because they watched some news feed somewhere that said so. And then one tweet, one tweet, one tweet can change history and boom. 80,000 people traveled to Washington, D.C. 1,300 people were, so far, 1,300 people charged, 900 convicted, 140 police officers injured, five, five or six or seven, depending on how you count, people dead because of social media and <coughs> public indoctrination. This stuff is powerful. Don't let anybody say different. Grooming. Public indoctrination is where we try to manipulate an audience. Grooming is where we try to manipulate one person quietly. Grooming happens quietly, but it happens more often than you think. <coughs> it's not just sex trafficking. We have a history here in Minnesota of people, of Somalis, traveling to Syria and Somalia to join terrorist groups. This is an article about a young man who who tried to join a terrorist group. The police intercepted him at the airport, brought him home. He went through a bunch of re-education. They made him read Shakespeare and a bunch of literature, and now he's, he's, he's not radicalized anymore. But a lot of other people have traveled and joined these terrorist organizations. Some of them died. Some of them are in jail. They're all, they're all damaged. Their families are damaged, too. Grooming is more than just sex trafficking. Grooming, grooming tries to persuade somebody vulnerable to do your to become a slave, so grooming grooming is bad, and then and then oh wrong button I gotta push this button <laughs> good I didn't turn it off <laughs> um, grooming I have a I have a, a twenty minute presentation just on this alone as a cybersecurity professional we have we're supposed to think like attackers so think like an attacker then you can mount a good defense that's just kind of fundamental security one oh one. So if I were an online predator, how would I attack somebody? So I went to Facebook and I just started looking at posts and I found a few people whose names started with A. This took me five minutes to find this. Five minutes, not even five minutes. And this person posted a, just a little essay about how she is a misfit. 
<coughs> and misfits are the one who change society, but we go through pain to do it and go on like that. There's my example. That's my that's my mark. If I were a predator, this is by the way, this is the creepiest this is the creepiest blog post I've ever done and the creepiest video. This is right here is as creepy as this is gonna get, I promise. If I were a predator, I could I would I would approach her with a private message. And I would say, hey, let's just call her Alice. You know, Alice and Bob, they're our famous cybersecurity people. Hey, Alice, I, I, I saw your post. You know what? I feel like kind of a misfit, too. Are you a fan of the movie A Bug's Life? Are you, do you like Flick? Well, I like Flick because, you know, he was a misfit. And look at all the good stuff he did. I would do everything I could think of to try to get in this, in, into this person's head. And then we'd have a dialogue. And then we'd meet face to face. And then after a while, I'd own her. Is that just sick or what? This is human nature. When I was research, um, I talked to um, John Turnipseed in Minneapolis. John was a notorious pimp and a drug dealer, and then he turned his life around in the 90s, and he became a Christian, and he, and he led uh, a center, the Center for Fathering at Urban Ventures. He died in 2022 before I could show him my latest book, because he helped me, he helped me um, inspire it. John said, that these these young girls, they have they don't have father they don't have good fathers in their life, and so they turn to predators like what John used to be as their father figure. And John said he was an expert at it. He knew he knew how to push their butts. He knew how to manipulate them. In John's day, he did it on the streets face to face. Today, this is how we do it over the internet. Geography is not a boundary anymore. Somebody on the other side of the world can manipulate us into doing things that we wouldn't otherwise do. <coughs> be, be aware. <coughs> um, and then bullying. This is the one, this is a, um, I found this example. This happened in Hastings, Minnesota. In 2021, there was a, a, imagine that, a mass controversy at a public school. Imagine that. And there's a group of parents that did not want to do masks. You know, remember COVID and all that. That wasn't that long ago. The chairman of the, the chairperson of the school board wanted to have a mask mandate. Some other parents didn't. The parents who didn't got a Facebook group together called Conservative Parents of Hastings, and they publicly shamed this family because this family had a transgender child. And so they, they exposed this transgender child to public ridicule. That's, that's bullying. That's bullying. And uh, the, story, the story made all kinds of news. Whether you agree with the parents' choices or not, is it, that's not what we're going to talk about. That's not the point here. The point here is that this group bullied this family for no, because they were mad about a political thing. That's not right. So what are the consequences? <laughs> I was talking to a youth pastor in, at the men's retreat from, from, um, from Detroit Lakes. <clears throat> this is kind of what he told me about. Addiction, depression, loneliness, riot, suicide, those are bad consequences. Why do we even do social media with all this bad stuff? <laughs> and so what a lot of these a lot of a lot of youth pastors do is they just turn off social media. But you can. So why is social media good? My half sister lives in Boise, Idaho. She just lives far away. We never talk to each other except now we have Facebook, so we talk, we send messages back and forth. And we send emails back and forth because they're free. You don't, the phone calls cost, emails are free. Well, now phone calls don't cost anymore either. And then this is a cool story. This all happened through social media. I have, I didn't know about this until a year and a half ago. I have two half sisters and a half brother I never knew about. I didn't know they existed in the whole world. Turns out Charlene has been looking for me for 50 years mm -hmm. and I didn't know it. Well. She found me in a friends list for my sister Tony. Well, I was, Tony and I are Facebook friends, and she found Tony and she found me, and I um, and I kind of matched what she was looking for, and she reached out. Boom! I have two sisters and a half brother that I never knew about. So it's social media is not all bad. Getting rid of geographical boundaries is not all bad, but it exposes us to a bunch of threats. Remember that strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. You got good stuff and you got bad stuff. So what do we do about this? How do we how do we how do we deal how do we deal with this new danger today that we didn't used to have? And so maybe we can put the cat back in the bag. Yeah, good luck with that. You knew where I was going. <coughs> so I need I need some more academic stuff. I need some definitions. Um, 
and, and these are going to be like, duh, Greg, super simple definitions. So first off is what is a fact? Something known to have happened to exist, especially something for which proof exists or which there's information, that's a fact. We've got to be careful about separating facts from lies. A lie is kind of the opposite of, the fact, of a fact. A lie is a thing that's not true. Demonstrate, dem demonstrated not true. And then there's opinions. Opinions are official definitions, but if you want to summarize it, opinions are what we think of things. Here, what, what, what do we think is true? What do we think is false? That's an opinion. And then credibility. Credibility is a big deal. Credibility is whether or not you can trust somebody. That's credibility. All right, is that like just super duper obvious? Mm -hmm. You can say yes if you think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Participation is a good thing. Because um, and then context. How many how many quotes have we seen from somebody where the quote is something super duper outrageous, but then we find out that quote was taken way out of context, and if we look at the context around it, they meant something completely different from the quote. How many of us have seen manipulations like that? It's okay to raise your hand or say yeah, yeah I have. Yeah, everybody in the room. Yeah, yeah. So. Now we're going to practice. This is the this is the participation part. We got. Hey, what time? Um, we're supposed, when are we done? We're done at twenty after, right? We got lots of time. Okay. <laughs> Facts, lies, or opinions. Kelsey and Chris Waits. That's the family in Hastings that had the transgender child. They did a horrible parenting job, or they did an honorable parenting job. Pick your pick your adjective. Fact, lie, opinion. Okay. Science is not trustworthy. Fact, lie, or opinion? It's a little gray. <laughs> uh, all three. All three. Uh, all three? It's okay. We'll go with opinion. Science is an attack against God. How many, how many people have heard that? Opinion? Okay. All right. Um, I'll give you my opinion on that. God invented science. So when we say science is no good, we're really attacking God. So I'll, I'll, I'll put these, I'll go with these as opinions, but I'll put them more towards the lie end of the scale. All right, here's one. Here's one. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this one. Jesus died for our sins. Fact, lie, or opinion? Fact. Yep, most people are going to say fact. All right, I'm going to give you a story on this. I, 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 was, I became a Christian in October 1994. I told you that dirt was young when I was born, right? <laughs> I was 37 years old when I became a Christian. I grew up, I, I went to a Catholic school in, in first grade. I still remember some of the scenes. <laughs> I still remember the nuns. I never got my fingers whacked as far as I can remember, but other people did. And I remember everybody, everybody, Jesus died for your sins, Greg. Isn't that wonderful? And I thought, what do you mean Jesus died for my sins? Assuming he even lived, he was gone 2,000 years before my ancestors, before my grandparents were born. How do you mean he died for my sins? Well, Adam sinned, and so since Adam sinned, everybody's a sinner, and we all deserve to die. Well, if we deserve to die, why are we even here in the first place? You're going you're gonna to run up against this reasoning. You're going to run up against it. You guys are youth leaders. You've got youth. You've got young people in your, under your charge. You're going you're gonna to mix it up with people who don't believe a Christian mindset. So... <clears throat> I told you in 1994, I became a Christian because evidence persuaded me that I had that that that, 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 that was the truth, right? I told you that, and that and that's why. But it still bugged me. What do you mean Jesus died for my sins? I don't get it. I deserve to die. Adam sinned, therefore I deserve to die. How does that how does that conclusion follow from any evidence anywhere? I know people in the New Testament said so, but that doesn't mean I have to believe it. And then I was, I was, uh, I was, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was at a McDonald's in Excelsior, Minnesota, off Highway 7. That McDonald's is closed now. And I was, <coughs> I was getting ready to go visit a customer and try to sell them cybersecurity services. And I was sitting next to the, the uh, friend of mine who was, try, who was selling for me, my sales rep. And the light bulb went on in my head. That's a fundamental assumption that all of everything rests on. You don't have to prove it. Jesus died. We all deserve to die. And so Jesus died in our place. You, you've, you've heard the words a million times. You've said the words a million times. I've heard the words a million times. But that's when it clicked. That's when it clicked. And I, and I, I got real excited and real loud because I waved my hands around a lot. 
Everybody at McDonald's stopped and stared at me. I didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go... Now, I have an opinion on the opinion. Just because I have an opinion doesn't mean you have to share it. But I'm going to go with opinion on this. And I'm, I know that's controversial. And, and mm -hmm. I know that's controversial. It's, it's also an opinion that I share. Jesus died for my sins. But I can't prove it. And when I, whenever I try to prove it, I get in lots of online forums. Whenever I try to prove it to somebody, I stumble all over the place. I can't prove it. So I'm going to go with a... There's plenty of evidence to back it up, but not proof that you could prove in a court of law. So there you go. Um, and my... Yes, sir? Just to add on to that, on youth, they've done some studies right now mm -hmm. on apologetics with teens right now, the Gen Z mostly, mm -hmm. and the alphas, and they're finding that their need for uh, scientific proof is almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. oh. It's relational truth that they need. Yeah. So right. they believe truth if they believe the person mm -hmm. is telling them that, and they see that person's life change. Mm -hmm. If they see a person like yourself, you're saying their life changed, they're like, mm -hmm. well, there's our proof. Look at Greg. His life is different. It was, and so like, that's all they need for some weird way. So our yeah. life on their relationship is, is the apologetics that Gen Z is looking for. That makes, yeah. that, make, uh, so, that makes sense. That makes sense. It, um, my life gradually changed. There's there's stories about people who became Christians and then, bam, the light bulb went on and in the morning they were one way and in the afternoon they were a different way. That wasn't me. That was that was not me. That's you know, honestly that's why Gen Z wants to know from older people, like not like 25 year olds, but like 55, 65 year olds, mm -hmm. because then they have that longer story arc that they then credible yeah. as opposed to someone who just had their life changed. It's going to change back tomorrow. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I've got a pretty good story arc. And and um, and <laughs> no, Greg, you're not weird. You're unique. <laughs> Amen. <Yeah. laughs> um, I, I grew up growing up in an alcoholic household, and all the insanity that goes with it. I lived that, and so it, it wasn't until I was a lot older that I realized how many people lied to me, how many different ways, and so that's partly why I'm so sensitive to it now. So. <laughs> Come over to the good. Come over from the dark side, Greg. I'll, I'll use that sensitivity I've acquired for lies, hopefully in a positive way, to give back a little. And that's why. That's why I, I know my opinion on that's controversial. But that's that's why. I'm. I'm. Yeah, um, Thomas, you don't believe me? Stick your hand in my side and see what you think. Hey, Tom.
help love your neighbor as yourself? No. Does it, does it acknowledge anything about Jesus one way or the other? I am your retribution. So how does that fit with wisdom? Yeah, down. Thumbs down. This is one of my favorites. Immigrants poison our blood. Thumbs down on that one? Yeah, okay. All right. Now, okay, I, sh- I, I should have made, made Greg's name yell. A th- thumbs up, you're just messing with me. <laughs> um, when you do English, you want to write an active voice. Somebody did something. Said somebody had, so I, need, I needed to name somebody. So this isn't like me. This is just generic Greg. I had, I had, I had a name, so just... <laughs> So you read this kind of stuff on like an Instagram and different different posts. Where I'm going with this is some of the some of the social media posts that lead to suicide. Greg is a loser. I mean, pick your name, but Greg is a loser. That that doesn't to me that doesn't represent love your neighbor as yourself very well. I think I think everybody shares that opinion. Greg must be some kind of communist Nazi. I've actually had people tell me that. That's that's a quote. You must be some kind of communist Nazi. <laughs> Greg has thick skin. <laughs> that's not an opinion, that's a fact. <laughs> and then, um, now, Christians should stick to Scripture and let politicians deal with society. Romans 13, 1. Romans 13, Romans chapter 13, verse 1 has some text about that. Obey the law and, and, and obey the rules and, and, and so on. <clears throat> What do you think about that? Should Christians stick to scripture and let politicians deal with society? I see some tentative. Mm-hmm. You can shake your head vigorously. That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I think that we have a duty to be, we're supposed to be lights to society and let your, let your light shine and all that. We're supposed to do that. I've had people tell me, and lots of social media threads, and I should just keep my mouth shut. One family member said, "Family member said, Greg, you do security. You should just stick to fixing computer viruses and let other let other people who know what they're talking about do talk about these society things." Thank you for your input. <laughs> um, and then churches should endorse political candidates they like. No. Not just say no. You mean no. say it in words? No. Say no. 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 Say heck no. <laughs> um, okay. This is this is. Uh, you, you just when you when you do these kind of messaging things, you have to have some humor. So, um, oh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it plenty of time. I hope you have lots of questions. Um, <laughs> indulge me. Join my elite society. Send me money today. Send me money by this one. Have a yeah. Send me money by midnight tonight to join my elite society. These are real. By the way, these are real emails. I get two or three of these every single day. I've gotten them for years. And my friends tell me, Greg, those aren't real emails. Nobody's going to send emails like that for real. That's some kind of spoof parody something or other. It's not. These are real emails from the Republicans that I've gotten. Here's another one. <laughs> Join the Make a Lot of Money Again for Greg movement. That's, that's my, I decided I would change the acronym. <laughs> Your personalized offer. What's good for Dig deep. Give me money. What's good for Greg is good. And then hurry, your payment status is incomplete. I get incomplete payment status emails all the time. So I could do other fishing samples. I've got a whole blog category of, of, um, of uh, fish samples, fish with a PH, fish. And the idea is send you messages and put you off balance and make you do something stupid. So I, I chose these for my examples. Here's your call to action. This is. After everything I told you, social media has all these problems. If you don't remember anything else, if you don't remember the humor or anything else, remember this, Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 17. I am sending you out like a sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. And and be on your guard. You will be handed over to local councils and you will be flogged in the synagogue. In today's world, flogging in the synagogue means you'll be shamed all over the place. If, if you take an unambiguous stand in favor of true Christian principles, you will make people mad. Relish it. <laughs> Paul did. Peter did. A lot, of, a lot of the original 12 disciples did. 
Hey, way cool! I'm gonna get strung up, but do me a favor. Just string me up upside down, will you please? I don't want to. I don't. Only Jesus deserved to be strung up that way. We'll put some humor behind that, but you know, you know what I mean. And then, oh yeah, a few great books. And uh, these are book plugs, but um, not all mine. This is um, <coughs> Tim Alberta. His his dad died, and his dad was a pastor at this church in Michigan. And he wrote for a magazine. He wrote. He writes for the Atlantic magazine, and he's a <coughs> he's a a pastor himself. So his dad died, and when he's there for the funeral, the people in that church accosted him because he wasn't. He wasn't. He, they didn't think he was a strong enough Christian because he didn't. He because he'd written stuff about Christian nationalism that they didn't like, and so he went on a multi-year tour of lots of churches and wrote down impressions and what he saw. This is a great book. This is a great book about the church in America. It's got a it's got a, re, a, a redemption message at the end, but you have to go through a lot of pain to get there. It's a great book. Everybody should read this book. <clears throat> this is um, the true story of Canadian human trafficking. There's American human trafficking now too, but this is the one that I wrote by, by Paul Bogue. He lives in Winnipeg. This is a story about a 15-year-old girl. She was a soccer player in Toronto. Just a normal, regular, just a normal kid. Her dad was kind of aloof, kind of. And somebody, somebody started interacting with her over Facebook. And then snuck her, they snuck out and did a few dinners. And then she snuck out and moved in with this guy and traveled around with him in his Mustang, which she thought was really, really, really cool at first. Until she didn't. And um, why don't you pose for some pictures? Come on, it won't be any big deal. It'll be fun. Just right pose for a few pictures. You don't have to go then, to Thailand and then go it went down from to, there. To be next door. She, she was a slave to this Except guy for two years. <laughs> this is a sober did ISIS over video. Can you imagine that? She had she had the worst of the worst ISIS terrorists, and she was vetting with them back and forth, and she documented all the all the all the techniques they used to try to persuade her to get on a plane and go to Syria and be somebody's new wife, some 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 um, <coughs> terrorist's new wife. Um, she can't use her own name now because they found out they found out who she was. She had to go into hiding because of this book. Sobering stuff. I told you, geography doesn't limit what we can do anymore. And of course, great fiction. You wouldn't be complete without one of my own, one of my own book plugs. This is trafficking you with this fiction. This will be out. This will this will come out by the end of the month. Um, Jesse Johnson is a <coughs> is a bank fraud analyst. She works at a large bank in downtown Minneapolis. She meets a young woman named Leilani in the in the coffee shop in the Skyway, and that starts her on an adventure going up against a global sex trafficking ring that wants to make money and doesn't want anybody in their way. And John, I told you about John Turnipseed. John, John, John had a bunch of influence on this book and I wish he died, he died a few months before I had a manuscript ready to show him and I, I wish I'd show, I wish I'd talked to him more. That's a, that's a regret that I have. And then here's how to contact me. A bazillion different ways on my website and by email and LinkedIn and Facebook. And I'm all over social media. And Questions, comments, darts, eggs, tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had mentioned a lot of like, you know, um, it's the vulnerable ones who get, you know, um, manipulated and groomed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, are there ways that we can like be on the lookout and like recognize like this is, is a vulnerable person? Like, yes. Are there things we should be looking out for? Yes. Watch for changes in behavior. Watch for somebody who used to be outgoing turning sullen. Um, um, that's the biggie. Watch for changes. And um, the other thing, people who are who are overtly vulnerable to this stuff, I can I can tell you for a fact that people who have PhDs in world religions can fall prey to evil and can engage in it in a bad way and can influence a lot of people the wrong way and can cause lots and lots and lots of pain. So don't don't necessarily assume that it's somebody who's maybe on the fringes or who maybe is considered an outcast in their social group. Don't assume that it's always that way, because it's not. This, this kind of stuff can happen to anybody if you, if you allow it. There, um, there was 